so students we are going to start uh, another topic which is the grinding process so let us take a look into what are the topics that we are going to cover in the grinding process so first we are going to start with the introduction to this grinding process then we are going to look into the structure of the grinding wheel grinding process and then what are the different grinding operations which are available and then what are the abrasive processes that we can do with the help of this grinding manufacturing process so before we uh, move into the details let us take a look into the grinding process or grinding introduction so grinding is basically a machining process and it is virtually an abrasive machining process because we are providing abrasive uh, cutting tools in the form of very small teeth uh, or abrasives and those abrasives acts as a cutting tools so let's say i've got a very small particles and that small particle has got very sharp corners so if i am going to collect a lot of small particles which are very very sharp and i am going to rub it with the smooth surface then what is going to happen is that it is going to result in the removal of material so this is how uh, or this is the phenomena by which the grinding process takes place so the material is removed by the action of hard and abrasive particles in the form of bonded wheel so these particles what i need to do is i need to glue them i need to bond them and when i bond them i bond them in the form of a grinding wheel that is why there are thousands and uh, of grinding particles which are attached on the grinding wheel the grinding uh, op operations are basically a types of abrasive processes and they can be honing lapping super finishing polishing and buffing that we are going to look later on so when we talk about abrasive machining okay then abrasive machining is generally a finishing process after you have completed the cutting process after you have completed the rolling cutting bending shearing etc now that you want to clear the surface which is more smoother you want to finish the surface so this is when grinding operation or grinding wheels help us in carrying out our finishing operation so abrasive processes are important because it can be used on all types of material whether it is soft whether it is hard whether it is non metallic so you can use it in plastic each and every material can be grounded it is very able to produce very extremely fine surface so the roughness r a value of the surface roughness can be reduced so for a sur surface which is very very rough okay we can reduce the roughness and make it little bit more smoother with the help of grinding operation dimensions are can be held to extremely close tolerances so you can make it basically have dimensional accuracy based on grinding process so uh, what is the difference between grinding and milling so here is an example where you can see that you have got a grinding wheel and then you have got a milling uh, cutter so abrasive grains you got many abrasive grains you can see abrasive grains in the grinding wheel are very much smaller and they are more numerous than the milling cutter teeth so we have got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 uh, cutting teeth but however we have got thousands of cutting teeth in the form of abrasive present in the grinding wheel then in cutting speeds in grinding are much higher than milling so grinding grinder sometimes is able to cut uh, more faster abrasive grits in the grinding wheel so basically the teeth of very small particles they create a, a term it a term is used to call them abrasive grit so abrasive grit in the grinding wheel are randomly oriented so some, one of the teeth is in this direction then another teeth is in this direction then another one is in this direction so so the angle of uh, attack of the uh, cutting teeth is randomly oriented However, if you uh, see for a milling machine or milling cutter, you can see that the angle, there is some definite angle and they are arranged in a particular fashion. So uh, the grinding wheel is self-sharpening as the wheel wears and abrasive particles are fractured. So what happens is that when our grinding wheel particle fracture, then what happens is that it creates another particle, which this fracture part is removed during the grinding process and a more uh, what you can say a sharp uh, teeth is again produced so for milling machine the cutter can become blunt then we need to resharpen it or we need to create a new one or we need to replace one however for grinding process the abrasives basically they cut themselves 
during the grinding process and then a new teeth are formed a new cutting edges are formed in particular so what are the different types of grinding wheels so we've got basically two types one is peripheral grinding wheel and number two is phase grinding wheel and in peripheral we've got number a is a straight number b is recessed on two sides we will put this recessing on two sides so basically peripheral means that the grinder or the grinding uh, abrasives are on the periphery or on the outer edges okay so you can see that all of them are on the outer edges of the uh, grinding wheel then we've got a metal frame and then we've got cutoff wheel so cutoff wheel is something quite famous you've seen this type of cutoff wheel for primarily for cutting operation next we've got phase grinding wheel so phase grinding wheel can be cylindrical wheel straight cup and flaring cup wheel we've got uh, number g is uh, flaring and then we've got this uh, cylinder wheel and then we've got straight cup so uh, these are some of the types of grinding wheel in terms of shape and in terms of how the abrasives are arranged either on the periphery or on the face okay so here the abrasives are more on the grinding face uh, in the next picture you can see that the grinding uh, abrasives or abrasive grits are on to the face of this grinding wheel uh, so this was an example of a uh, flaring cup so this is a flaring cup grinding wheel but here in this case you can see that the abrasives are on the periphery so this type is called peripheral grinding wheel and this particular type looks like cutoff type grinding wheel here you can see that the uh, grid size is mentioned the size of the grinding wheel is mentioned the speed maximum rpm is also mentioned so uh, and then here we've got the manufacturer who has produced or prepared this grinding wheel so this is the information that we get uh, when we take a look on to a grinding wheel <coughs> So grinding consists of abrasive particles and these abrasive particles are bonded together with the help of a resin, with the help of a glue. Okay, so I am going to bind or combine grinding abrasives with the help of a glue. So how a grinding wheel is made is something that we need to look into a video. Uh, so in the next slide you will look at a video on how grinding wheel is made. A grinding wheel is a tool used to grind down, polish, or cut materials such as metal or glass. Like a sander, it uses abrasive grains to wear away the surface in minute particles. Grinding actually sharpens the wheel by breaking those grains and creating new sharp points. A grinding wheel is made from several chemical and mineral ingredients. The formula varies according to what the wheel will be intended to grind, polish, or cut. For metal work, they use abrasives that are aluminum oxide based. For cutting cement, stone, and other non-metal objects, they use abrasives that are silicone carbide based. Even within those two categories, the formula differs between, say, a wheel designed for hard steel versus one designed for soft steel. Computer programmed scales automatically weigh the various ingredients, including additives such as iron oxide for wheels that cut or grind iron, and the mineral cryolite, which lubricates the abrasives. Powdered and liquid resins bond all these ingredients together. The powdered resin and additives are the first ingredients to go into the mixer. After about a minute, the abrasives and liquid resin go in. Another five minutes of churning and the mixture is the consistency of damp beach sand. They screen out any globs or chunks so that the mix has a smooth and even texture. A device called a shuttle spreads the mixture into a wheel-shaped mold. The diameter and depth of the mold cavity corresponds to the dimensions of this specific grinding wheel model. At the base of the mold is a reinforcement disc made of fiberglass.
Next, a galvanized steel ring goes in the center of each wheel. It's four small anchors gripping the mixture. This ring is designed to protect the shaft that spins the grinding wheel. A hydraulic press now compacts the material, applying up to 350 kilograms of pressure per square centimeter. That's the weight of about 30 cars. Every single grinding wheel coming off the line is weighed to ensure it meets design specifications. Next, the wheels go into an oven whose temperature rises gradually from 20 to 200 degrees Celsius over a period of 24 hours. This cures the resin, bonding all the ingredients together. When the grinding wheels come out, they're hard as a rock. The last step of the production process is labeling. The automated machinery moves the wheels from station to station using suction. It applies eight drops of hot glue around the center, then slaps on the first label. The label bears the manufacturer's logo and lists the grinding wheel's dimensions, its intended use, and the maximum spin speed. The equipment then flips each wheel and glues a second label onto the other side. This label lists the safety information. The diameter of a grinding wheel can range from just 5 centimeters to more than 50 centimeters. It can be just a millimeter thin or up to 12 millimeters thick. The smallest wheels are designed for things like auto body work, while the largest ones can cut through railway tracks and thick metal construction beams. So students, now that you have seen how a grinding wheel is made, now let's take a look at the basic parameters of grinding wheel. So as you can see that this grinding wheel has got abrasive material, okay? So grinding efficiency depends on the abrasiveness, how sharp the teeth are. Then what is the size of the grain? Okay, So whether the size is small or whether the size is quite large. This is also a determining factor. Next, how the uh, grains are bonded together. In between them, what kind of glue is used? Okay, So how the grains are hold together by the help of bond or a glue is something that is also very important. Then we look into the wheel structure, uh, what a grinding wheel contains, okay? what are the different particles which are available in the grinding wheel and then what is the grade and how a grade defines whether it is a soft or a hard grade is something and what kind of material that we can use for different wheel grades is something that we will uh, see in our uh, upcoming slides. So when we talk about abrasive materials, okay, then abrasive material means something which is very sharp and it can basically create a scratch onto a material. So how quickly and how hard a scratch can be made, how hard a material can be removed is the abrasiveness of a material. So a material, the abrasive material should be very hard, okay. It should have wear resistance. It means that when I want to rub it with something, then it should resist the changes in the material it should resist the removal of material itself it, it should be able to remove the other material that i want to remove let's say this is my workpiece and this is my grinding wheel then i want my grinding wheel to remove the workpiece but not itself get removed itself kept away worn out so that is why this wheel should have good wear resistance then it should have toughness also it means that it should be able to withstand the amount of energy so that it does not break easily if the material does not have toughness, it will uh, get fatigue and after it will get fatigue, it can get cracked. Okay, So a grinding wheel should have enough amount of energy to withstand and that is called toughness of a material. Then we look into the friability of the grinding abrasive material. Friability is the capacity of the abrasive material to fracture when the cutting edges become dull or blunt. <laughs> So during the grinding process, let's say initially my grinding teeth is like this, one particle is like this, then slowly, slowly it becomes worn out and now it becomes dull. So this is the dull 
grinding uh, grain of a abrasive material. Now what I want is after some time I want it to become uh, you know sharp again. Okay, so friability is the ability of the abrasive material. This is my abrasive material to resharpen itself. Okay, during the grinding process, this is called friability. So uh, when 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 it is going to fracture, okay, then new uh, grains are formed. Okay, so the ability of material to fracture again and form new grains is friability. So next we move on to the grain size. Now a grain can be very small, a grain can be very large. So what does it mean? Grain size is very important in determining the surface finish and material removal rate. So we need to determine two things surface finish and material removal rate. If the grain size is very small, then very smooth surface is created. If the grain size is very large, then a rough surface is created. Because the grains are very large, and they will irregularly remove the material from the surface. Uh, and you can see that if the surface is uh, very smooth, then a better surface finish is created. The less selection of the grain size also depends on the hardness of the workpiece material. So this is my workpiece, okay, and it is very very hard. If the hardness of the material is very high, then what I want to do is I want to use smaller grains because they will result in chipping of small small particles on the hard material okay and it will result in good material removal rates if i use a soft material something which is very soft then i will use large particles okay so that they will slowly slowly remove the uh, particles from the surface and they will slowly slowly improve the surface i don't want the uh, small uh, grain size onto a soft workpiece because it, it will completely remove the material from the surface Softer grain size will remove, result in faster uh, removal rates. So this is something that we should look into. <clears throat> so uh, we have got uh, different types of bonds. Okay, we have got vitrified bond, silicate bond, rubber bond, resinoid bond, shellac bond, and metallic bond. And each of them have their own uses. For instance, vitrified bond can be used at elevated temperature, but silicate bond are very uh, sensitive and they can, they should be used where we need to minimize the heat generation. So we should not use any applications where the temperature increases during the grinding process. Then we have rubber bond. Okay, they are more flexible types. We have got resonoid bond. This is used for rough grinding. Rough grinding means we want to remove the material as much as we can. Then we've got shellac bond so that we have good surface finish. So shellac bond will be used with smaller grain size uh, material perhaps. Then metallic bond are used. Uh, they are used as diamond and cubic boron nitride grinding wheels. Uh, the abrasives are bonded onto the outside periphery of the wheel, thus conserving the costly abrasive material. So uh, metallic bond is also present for uh, inexpensive or uh, you know, perhaps relatively cheaper uh, grinding wheels. <coughs> Next, we move on to the wheel structure. So, when we take a look at the structure of uh, grinding wheel, then here you can see we've got an image. This is the microstructure of a grinding wheel. In this microstructure, we can see we have got uh, the grain. Okay, this is the abrasive grit or abrasive grain. Okay. And then we've got uh, the bonding material. This is the bonding material, such as vitrified bond, such as metallic bond, something like that. And then we've got the pores or the gaps which are present, okay? So these pores or gaps define how heavy our grinding wheel is. If there are less number of pores, then the grinding wheel is very heavy. And there is, there is a lot of air gaps and pores, then the, our grinding wheel is uh, lighter. Now air gaps are basically used for cooling the grinding wheel. It is very important for us to keep our grinding wheel cool as well. <coughs> uh, and it, it depends on how light we want our grinding wheel to be. So we've got three things. Number one is the bond material. Number two is the air gaps. And number three is the abrasive grains. So the wheel structure is basically, uh, you can see that the relative spacing of the abrasive grains can be seen in the wheel. 
grinding wheel contains abrasive grains bond material and air gaps now the volumetric portion of the grains bond material and pores is given by pg of grain plus pb of bond plus pp of pores is equals to 1.0 so together they have compute to a ratio of 1.0 uh, volumetric uh, ratio so they are they all together complete to, equals to be 100 <coughs> percent now pg is the proportion of aggressive grains pp is the bond material and pp is the pores <coughs> that is why depending on how much we have got the pores how much is the size of the pores uh, the wheel structure can be open or very dense so dense means less number of air gaps and open means more number of air gaps or pores <coughs> Now what is wheel grade? <coughs> wheel grade indicates the bond strength in the grinding wheel to retain the abrasive grains during the cutting operation. So when I am cutting uh, or when I am basically carrying out a grinding operation, then I have got my grains. Okay. So how strong is the bond? Whether this bond allows the grain to fall off or it does not allow very less number of grains to fall off. This is what wheel grade defines. It largely depends on the density of the bond material PB, how much and how strong the bond material has been used. Now grade is a measure in scale between soft and hard. So soft will lose grain easily. So this part is soft and then if the grain is losing very very slowly then this is called hard wheel. Soft wheel are used for application requiring a low material removal rate. So if I have got a very soft material okay and i don't want it to remove the material very very fast then i will use soft grinding wheel and hard wheels are used to achieve very high removal rates and they are used to relatively uh, work on soft material whereas for soft soft wheels are used for grinding very hard material uh, because uh, the hard material can be removed slowly slowly using soft wheels they can be used for soft and hard material interchangeably as well however preference is soft for hard material and hard grinding wheel for soft material next we move on to the process surface finish now the surface finish is smooth or it is very very rough it all depends on the grain and the type of the grinding bond and wheel that we are using Grinding is aimed to achieve superior surface finish compared to conventional machining. Factors which affect a surface finish is abrasive grain size, whether smaller size yield better surface finish, the small grain is going to produce better surface finish, and large grain is going to produce a rougher surface finish. Wheel structure, if the it is very dense, then it will produce better surface finish, and then the cutting velocity, how quickly is the speed of the grinding wheel during the cutting operation or surface finishing operation next we are going to move on to the grinding process surface temperature now in grinding most of the energy remains on the ground surface so you are basically doing grinding on a plate and you have got this grinding wheel then all the energy is basically uh, imparted onto the surface of the workpiece okay also the temperature rises in the workpiece so it is important for us to prevent this by giving or by cooling the workpiece slowly slowly or do grinding for only some amount of time so that we don't put residual stresses in the workpiece okay we don't soft the workpiece okay we don't crack the workpiece and we don't burn the workpiece so it is important for us to keep in mind that grinding will basically create more damage to the workpiece than itself next we move on to the wheel wear so as you see that previously you purchase a wheel which had a diameter of 10 millimeter but after some time the diameter becomes 5 millimeter so this is called the wear of the grinding wheel the material is removed from the grinding wheel also and this is due to the grain fracture at precious wear and bond fracture what are these grain fracture is basically the portion of the grain that breaks off so if i put this grain then how much is the grain which breaks off and it is removed or lost this is called grain fracture then atricious wear dulling of the individual grains result in flat spots and rounded edges so if my grain was previously very uh, rough then it becomes very dull and this is called atricious wear it means that the cutting edges are removed only the corner portion of the cutting edges are removed during the 
grinding process. Next, we move on to bond fracture. So individual grains are pulled out from the bonding material. So if I have got two grains and they are bonded together by a bond, and if the bond fractures, then the one of the grain will lose and one of the grain will attach or remain attached to the adjacent grain. So this is, these are the three different types of wear that occur during the grinding process. So when we look at the life of a grinding wheel, okay, and you can see it in the form of a chart, okay. <clears throat> the volume of the work material removed is on the x-axis. So how much material you are removing on the x-axis and volume of the wheel where how much the wheel is worn out is on the y-axis. So in the initial stages what happened is that we see grain fracture. Then later on in the second part we see attritions where, where uh, in the initial stages what happens we have got the grain and grain fracture. Then in the middle stages what happens is that the grain becomes dull. And then later on what happens is that the in the third stage the bond between them breaks and the grain is completely removed. So when the wheel is in the third region it must be resharpened. And the process of resharpening is used is called dressing. Okay. So I can use a dressing tool to basically resharpen now my grinding wheel. Dressing involves breaking of dull rotates. So I will remove the dull grains and then I will be removing chips that have become clogged in the wheel and it will help me create new cutting edges. So here is a, a video uh, that you guys can see on the inspection of grinding wheel. A grinding wheel that has been mishandled can be dangerous. Grinding wheels are extremely fragile and must be handled and stored with care. Wheels should be visually inspected before use. To assure that a wheel isn't cracked, ring test it using a non-metal object. A good wheel will have a clear ringing sound. A cracked wheel will not. If a wheel has been dropped or appears to be damaged, return it to the manufacturer or discard it, but don't use it. Wheel speeds are marked on the wheel or blotter and must not be exceeded. Wheel guards must always be in place before turning on a grinding wheel to avoid injury should the wheel fail. Proper eye protection should always be worn during grinding operations to protect against flying grit and sparks. Proper balance of the grinding wheel is essential to produce high quality parts. Out of balance wheels produce excess vibration, early wheel failure, and can destroy workpiece surface finish. Grinding wheels may be initially balanced on a balance stand. Modern machines are sometimes equipped with an automatic balancing device. With higher wheel speeds, automatic balancing becomes a necessity.